All right, so, I mean, maybe you think this is stupid, but I'm, I'm thinking about this, you know, like this little girl, like, I don't know. I'm just thinking like, who's there when this little girl is like putting our pajamas on at night, getting ready to go to sleep, you know, something as simple as that, you know, in the dark. Or is it even dark? I, mean, I don't know. You know, maybe she's sleeping under those big fucking industrial lights. I mean, can she even sleep at night? Is anybody reading to her or talking to her? I mean, she wouldn't talk to I me. Mean, come on, is anybody even around to be listening? I mean, who's she going to talk to really? Like, what's she going to say to a bunch of people she doesn't even really know? So why am my videos not as good as your videos? I mean, first of all, I don't know as much as a lot of YouTubers know. Because I really just started doing a lot of this stuff within the last six months or so, you know? I mean, I did shoot a film on my phone, but, and that was a good kind of teaching time for me. You know, I learned about white balance and ISO and aperture and framing. And, I, you know, I learned a lot about filmmaking, but I haven't had a camera in my hands for even six months. So that's part of the reason. But the other reason is that I don't think they're gonna get that much better in terms of YouTube videos because I'm not really spending that much time with my editing, you know, and I'm not really the guy trying to get a million, I don't even have a lot of subscribers, you know what I mean? Like I got like, I don't know, 150, 160 subscribers maybe, 130, I don't even know. You know, I'm not asking people to subscribe, I'm not trying to monetize my channel or anything. Um, I make my money in the theater and with my filmmaking. So I, you know, and usually as an actor, um, so not my filmmaking, but my, you know, being in the arts. Um, but I'm trying to learn this well enough to be able to, like I'm working on a documentary right now. I'm a little nervous about it because it's the first time I've done something like that, something like that on my own. But I'm pretty confident too, because I feel like I've learned a lot and I know how to tell stories. So anyway, why is my video not as good as yours when it comes to YouTube? The thing is, first of all, I have so much respect and admiration for the people making videos on YouTube. I mean, they're like, they're like films to me or commercials or TV shows. I mean, they're like full blown productions. You know, the B-roll is incredible. The audio is amazing. The, the storytelling. I mean, it's some of these YouTube videos are amazing. Even just, you know, reviews, you know, you know, watch a guy like Chris Brockhurst do a review on a lens and it's like watching a short film, you know, Potato Jet, you know, I mean, everybody, I'm not going to start mentioning names, you know, Danny Gewurz, Brandon Lee. It's like watching real, it is watching real serious filmmakers make YouTube videos, which is really cool. But that's not what I'm doing, you know, I am, kind of, I guess what I'm doing is sharing my process because I'm used to doing that and yo how about this too I'm thinking about this like what if she had to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night when she first got there like that first night and I'm trying to have a different place from Facebook or Instagram to make people aware of my work which is film and theater so like I have a new play um, it's really not new because it was supposed to open in June of 2020 it's called the Red Plaid Suitcase, but obviously it didn't open because of the pandemic. So I figured, let me do something with this time. So I created a film based on the same story. But now I'm like, you know, things are starting to open up again for me, hopefully, you know. So YouTube is another place for me to let people know about my theater. And also now I'm making films, you know. Like I just wrote a full screenplay for a new film. Um, I'm going to start shooting it and I, I imagine it's going to take me until 2023 to finish it properly. But I'm trying to kind of create a genre of solo filmmaking because I'm a solo theater artist. So I'm going to share my process. You know, that's what I do. Like I develop my theater work in the streets, you know, and in parks and abandoned storefronts. Like I share my process until eventually a few years later, starts to wind up in theaters and first small theaters and then hopefully bigger theaters, you know? So YouTube for me is a more serious place actually than Instagram or Facebook. It's like, 
it's not people kind of judging one another and going at each other and having political discussions. I, for me personally, like I find YouTube to be a little bit more of value when it comes to the craft, you know, whether it be filmmaking or music or a million other things, you know, cooking. I mean, it's more about craft in my opinion. So I really enjoy this space. So I'm not going to spend my personal time, you know, working on really editing and creating these amazing short films for YouTube. I'm going to be more the guy who just blurts things out sometimes. I might even share, like, like I'm sharing a rehearsal I did this morning after I ran. I, re I often rehearse in the street just to get my lines in my body, you know. So that's what I'm sharing here in this is part of my process for my play. Because, you know, since the play didn't open last year, it kind of fell out of my head and I'm re memorizing it now because I'm going to have some opportunities to finally perform this play. So I'll be sharing some of my process of where I rehearse, how I rehearse. I just, it's just kind of off the cuff, spontaneous stuff, you know? So to a lot of YouTubers, they probably look at my channel like, okay, that sucks. Or maybe to a lot of people looking for, you know, reviews of lenses and cameras and stuff. I'm not that guy, you know, but I am going to give you my perspective because I do find that that's kind of interesting, you know, like I'm a guy who is not a professional photographer or cinematographer, but I'm using this stuff professionally, you know? And so I think my opinion is probably resonant with people who are not at the level of some of the people who are doing these reviews or talking about cameras and lenses and all kinds of other equipment. But I am kind of a tech guy. Like, you know, I was a beta tester for a lot of pro audio equipment. So I'm very, very well versed in, you know, music software. Um, I play instruments and now I know how to use a camera. And so I do think that my opinion is of some value to somebody. And so that's really what I'm going to offer. But I have to admit, my YouTube videos are really not any good compared to what I see. I mean, some of you guys and some of you women are just like off the charts. Like, you know, um, I think of like make art now, that guy. I mean, I, I'm just, that guy is so gifted. You know, I, I consider him to be like uh, Francis Ford Coppola gifted director, you know, filmmaker. I mean, that's the kind of stuff, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, you're not going to find that here. But perhaps you'll find what I do of value coming from the perspective of really an actor first and a writer, like an actor and a writer or a playwright. I write screenplays and I am the talent, as they call us, to get out there and just tell me what to do and direct me and whatever. And I'm also a solo artist. So it's a little bit different than, you know, a typical just actor being told what to do all the time. I have a lot of responsibility on my own with my work because I'm the only one on stage. So as much as I do have a director, as some of my directors will tell you, I often just go off on my own and do what I want to do because I know I'm the only guy out there on that stage. And it's the same thing with the film that I just made. I directed it myself, you know, mostly because I wasn't taking it very seriously as something I would share on a professional level at the beginning. But then I reached out to some music friends and I, I have like an incredible score and it just became a, a much bigger project than I originally thought. But I directed it myself, which I don't recommend. And I don't think any actor should really direct themselves, but I tend to do that sometimes. And, um, you know, it's worked out for me. But I also really, really enjoy working with a great director and I've worked with some amazing directors. And that's really where I've learned the most is in collaboration with other people. You know, like, <clears throat> I don't think you learn as much just doing it on your own. I mean, you learn a lot, but, you know, collaborating is really, really crucial to growth and to evolution. And so that's why I'm here too. You know, I'm, I'm looking at my work here as collaboration with people. Maybe you will enjoy my perspectives on lenses. Like I've had quite a journey with trying to figure out what lenses I want to work with and why. And so what I did was a deep dive into the most well-known directors that I, you know, respect and watched videos on them and interviews and really learned why directors use certain lenses and why they shoot with certain focal lengths to tell their stories. And I found that of great value and it's really helped me. So 
even with my, I have an 18 to 105 zoom lens, but I really, really think about what focal length to go to before I shoot anything. Like everything is thinking about it first. I don't just like zoom in and out just to frame stuff. I don't do that. Um, right now I'm using my Samyang 12 millimeter F2 just because I was I'm, actually, honestly, I'm moving and I'm just taking some video in my apartment just to remember some of the stuff from here. I've been here for eight years and I'm going someplace else. And I know that a wide angle lens is the best way for me to go indoors. So actually I learned a lot. Like if I ever, I don't know if somebody wants me to do a real estate video, like actually somebody approached me and asked me to document um, the, the transformation of an old home. They bought a house that was built in the 1800s and they want to restore it to its, its original um, architectural condition and state. And so, not condition, but you know, its original architectural beauty. And so I'm gonna document that. That's kind of like a real estate video, right? Slash documentary. So um, I know that I'll use wide angle lens a lot because I'll be indoors and I'll want to get a lot of perspective you know, all together without having to shoot a million different angles. But then if I do want to get details and things like that, I do know that I'll use other focal lengths and other lenses to, you know, like accentuate exactly what I want to show for that moment. If it's not like the whole thing, including the environment, I might want to show some detail and I might want to isolate it and blur everything out. And so I know how to do that now, but I know because I've been watching your videos or, you know, other people's videos. And so anyway, I'm just sharing my process. My YouTube videos are never going to be what a lot of other people's YouTube videos are because I'm spending that kind of time on my actual movies, you know? And so I'm not going to share too much, obviously, because I want you to watch the movie. So if I share everything, why would you watch the finished film? So I am sharing my process of learning, I guess, and of putting things together just enough so that you don't know what the final product will be if it's a play or a film. Like I'm going to give you bits and pieces of my process so that when you finally get to see the movie or the film, I mean, or the play, you'll be like, wow, I didn't expect that. But you've kind of seen my steps to get to that point. So anyway, I just wanted to share that today. That's why my YouTube videos suck compared to yours, but they don't really suck. I think they're of value to somebody. I know that they would be of value to me. Like I kind of put out here what I was looking for when I first came here. I wanted more a perspective from people doing real work, not just people doing YouTube videos or who are just, you know, casual photographers, which is, again, amazing. I have incredible respect and admiration for people who are, and also, you know, wedding photographers. Like, I can't even imagine shooting a wedding for somebody like a life event that's going to let that, that people want to document for the rest of their lives. That is like an incredible responsibility. I can't even, I don't have that kind of command of my gear to even fathom being able to do that, you know? So that's a whole nother thing. It's also a whole nother thing for a lot of people who are just street photographers, people who just sell their photographs or their you know, I don't know, I think videographers are more, are more um, you know, like real estate or wedding or life events kind of people. I mean, I don't know. I just know that I'm a playwright and a filmmaker. And so I make movies and I make plays. And uh, I find that now I have a new tool to enhance what I do and make it even better. And so I graciously thank all of you, if any of you are watching this, um, you know, like Purpose Lens, um, you know, Dan Boxing, some of the people that I really follow, I thank you for the help that you've given me. But I'm doing a completely different thing. So I'm not trying to make the perfect YouTube video or get, I mean, if I get a million subscribers and I can monetize my channel, trust me, that would be awesome. I would love that. But it's not where my mind is, you know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking so much about that. I'm thinking about finishing a film I'm thinking about getting my play up on its feet and getting into a theater. That's what my life is, you know. Um, writing music, writing songs, that's more my life. So, um, but I really appreciate people coming to this channel. I hope that I'm offering something of value, you know. Um, 
Somebody actually asked me to shoot a music video recently, but I turned them down because I was like, trust me, you don't want me to shoot your music video because I'm not up to that yet. But um, I think after I shoot this documentary that I'm shooting, I will be more up to taking on I'm just, you know, I'm willing to say yes to things that I'm not used to if I feel like I can do it. The reason I took the documentary is because I already made a movie, a film, a full length feature with my camera. So I know how to tell the story. I know about cutting and framing and, you know, putting it all together to make one long linear story. And um, I also know that I can do it on my time. You hear that, right? You can tell I live in the Bronx, right? <laughs> Crazy traffic. But anyway. I know that with a documentary, I can be thoughtful about every moment. You know, it's like the type of documentary that I'm shooting, I can plan out everything so I don't have to be like run and gun. And, you know, I'm not going to shoot like, uh, you know, some kind of terrorist event that's happening in the middle of somewhere or things that I have to catch on the fly. Everything that I'm doing with this story is pretty planned out. So it's more like making a movie. It is a movie. A documentary is a movie, but you know what I mean. It's a little bit different. It's not a narrative story or a fantasy or fiction. It's nonfiction. Anyway, you get it. So that's why my videos are not as good as your videos. Um, they will never be as good. Your videos, the videos that I've watched are amazing. I'm so grateful and I'm actually addicted to them. I sit around, I watch lens reviews and camera reviews all the time even though I, I'm never gonna buy them or care about that stuff. Although I have bought quite a few lenses already. And I will get another, I probably will get a full frame camera at some point because I shoot a lot in low light. Like a lot of stuff I do is kind of dark, um, that kind of vibe, you know? So maybe I will because of what I've learned, I'm spending money. But I appreciate so much what you do. I find that a lot of these YouTubers are absolute geniuses, you know, Gerald Undone, he's, he's a genius, you know? Um, everybody in that whole camp, you know, there's a lot of people, um, YC imaging, like I, I consider a lot of these people geniuses at what they do, you know, so I appreciate what they put out there, full-time filmmaker, you know, all this stuff. Um, I just, I think it's incredibly generous of spirit to put all this information out into the universe so somebody like me could come through here and learn and apply it to my craft. So thank you very much. Um, I will do the best I can with these videos and hopefully they will improve just by default over time of just getting my 10,000 hours in. But I just wanted to say I'm not disrespecting this space by not doing great videos and not waiting for the video to be perfect. I'm, I am not, dis I have a lot of respect for this space. I'm just doing what I feel is my contribution for this space and what I think I have to offer and to share. And it's not quite the same as what a lot of people who I'm watching do. Um, as far as I can see, I don't know if they do other things, but you know, it's not what I see on YouTube. So anyway, thanks so much for watching always. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little clip in between here of me rehearsing out on the street. I did it after a long run this morning. Um, I'm walking along Marshallu Parkway in the Bronx. And um, that's uh, kind of a a view into my process of my making a play. You know, it starts like that where I'm just running around in the streets rehearsing and working things out. And sometimes I go into parks and I do it in front of people. I don't ever, I'm not the guy who like gets on the train and goes, ladies and gentlemen, watch me. I don't do that. But if people see me working in a park and they ask me if they can watch, I really, I appreciate that. And, and I have been, I have spent two hours in front of people doing a whole play. And then we do a Q&A, which is pretty slick. And I learn a lot. So that's a kind of a peek into my life. Uh, I'm opening the window into my process and my space, my artist space. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you on the next one. I hope you're well. I hope everybody you love is well. And um, here's the better days ahead. Still very difficult right now. And as you can see, by the way, I'm thinking more about this space because I have a backlight, right? I have a light in the next room back there. So I'm thinking more about it to try to have more respect and be more a part of this space so that nobody thinks that I take that for granted. I do not take what you are offering for granted 
and I don't think that I can just throw anything up there and be like, like you. Um, I'm just trying to be me and who I am. And I hope to see you in a theater one day to see what I do, or I hope you watch my films when they're finished. And because um, I do my work for one reason, and that's to share it. That's it. You know, to me, an artist's work is to share and to have a beautiful shared experience with an audience. And um, this space does that as well. So in that way, we have that in common. All right, I'm gonna stop now. Peace. Right? Like she's in this strange place trying to find this strange bathroom and she might have to walk down this long, scary, dark hallway. I mean, think about that, it's crazy. Like, was it even clean? You know, the hallway, the walls, were, was she walking barefoot on some nasty ass dirty carpet or a cold wood floor? I mean, what was it like? Was it dirty? The bathroom, her bed, was, was it clean enough for a kid, a child, a 10 year old? Was, was it clean enough to maybe? To, to maybe help her to feel safe. I don't know.